Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, where each weekday we offer a brief lesson from a section of today's reading. Uh, and then we examine a single relevant question that passage points us to. Today I'm joined by Chris Rexrode, and we're looking at a passage from Mark chapter 4. I'm going to ask the question, are you an insider? So only um, Mark chapter 4 and Mark chapter 13 record this full discourse of Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of Mark. Many sayings of Jesus are recorded throughout the gospel, but only two chapters in Mark are dedicated to this full teaching of Jesus. And Jesus, uh, the teacher, uh, teaches several parables in this text. He teaches the parable of the sower and the seed through verse 20, the parable of the hidden lamp, 20 through 23, and the parable of the seed growing secretly, verses 26 through 29, and the parable of the mustard seed, verses 30 through 32. Uh, Mark frequently notes that Jesus concludes any of his parables with the phrase, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So Jesus explains the reason that he taught in parables was because he intended that some of his teachings would only be understood by insiders. Verse 11 and 12 record those words to the, the disciples. You are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God, but I use parables for everything I say to outsiders so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. In verse 12, Jesus specifically quoted the scripture that was being fulfilled, Isaiah chapter uh, 6, verses 9 and 10. This passage is taken from the text where the prophet Isaiah was being called into ministry. And God told Isaiah that he, as he preached, the majority of Israel would be blind and deaf to the meaning of his message and would not receive it. Jesus indicated that his ministry operated in fulfillment of Isaiah's calling. Many people that would hear Jesus te preaching or teaching would be spiritually blind and deaf. They were blind and deaf because they were outsiders. So who is an insider, right? Those who are being called by God or those who were being called by God. And those who were called by God to hear the gospel would have their ears open to the message. They would be able to understand. Therefore, anyone who has ears to hear and were able to understand were also responsible to listen and obey. That's a big thing. It's, if, if you could hear and understand, you had to follow that up with obedience. So what happens when God makes you an insider? So insiders can understand. When you're listening to a message or reading the Bible in a particular particular text becomes clear to you, it is because the Holy Spirit is uniquely working to open your ears to hear. Insiders must listen even more closely because m more will be given to them. An insider is one whose understanding is increased every time they listen. In other words, insiders do not merely have a temporary flash of insight. Rather, their hearts stay open so that they receive consistent teaching from the scriptures. But part of the issue is insiders must obey. So this Hebrew concept of listening does not only refer to hearing and understanding the physical voice of Jesus, or even to understanding the meaning of all his words. To listen implies that they obey. Insiders do not only understand God's word, they obey it. Um, so, Chris, if we think of this in context of insiders and outsiders, why do you think that some people are insiders and some people are outsiders? Well, in the context of Jesus' teachings and the parables, it, it really has to do with their heart. You know, what is what is their intent right now? Are they just following the crowd? Are they looking for uh, the hype and the excitement of things? Um, we see people like Simon the Sorcerer later on in Acts what his intentions were with the Holy Spirit, that are you, are you coming because you you want to draw in closer to God and have a relationship with them, or are you following one of these other reasons? And I think the reason why he spoke that way, if I'm following your question right, um, the people that would have been considered outsiders were not there for the right reasons and they could actually be destructive with the gospel and their influence on people had they understood it and moved on and, and applied it to how, other people. How would you see insiders and outsiders today? Um, like yesterday, we talked about the difference between uh, Christians and disciples, and um, you could even say just attenders and disciples. Um, insiders and outsiders today, I mean, even within the church, they're are people that 
you know, show up on Sundays, they feel like they check mark their box and they kind of go on living their lives and their lives aren't really that different from unbelievers. I'm not saying that they do any horrible things, but they're not really growing. They're not opening their heart to transformation and for the, the Holy Spirit to work within them. Yeah. You know, I think insider outsider is easy to say, um, believer, unbeliever, mm -hmm. you know, that's an easy one, but I think it's more complicated than that. I think there are people who might even be believers that, and it's not just people who come to church and people who don't come to church. I, I think there has to be some intentionality yeah. to, to be an insider, to be someone who hears, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think there are people who, who he, one who listens, let me, let me say it that way, that implication that you're going to obey. Mm -hmm. Um, it, we, I think we find in it's James that talks about don't be hearers only, but be doers of the word. Mm -hmm. um, that sometimes hearing it goes right past us, like that doesn't apply to me. I don't need to think about that, you know. Um, but so much does apply to us, and so much we do need to be paying attention to. And um, I think much of it has to do with the condition of our heart. You know, mm -hmm. are we are we wanting to hear or listen? So. Um, what's the difference between hearing and obeying? I think a lot of this comes down to hearing and obeying comes down to kind of like the subject of like intellect. Um, Jesus is giving them information, but intellect itself is not transformation. It's an invitation to transformation, to persuade you to look at things differently, to behave differently. And for some people, they think that because I've read this and I understand this intellectually, but I'm not necessarily applying it. I think that's the difference between, um, you said hearing and what? Obeying. Obeying, yeah, hearing, obeying. I think the implication here is that if you listen, you will obey. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I would, it, it's, it's like the difference between hearing and, and listening, mm -hmm. right? My wife would tell you there are times I hear her voice, but I'm not listening to what mm -hmm. she says, yeah. right? Yeah. There are other times when I'm listening to what she says, you know, and then I take an action afterward. And then there are times that she doesn't think I'm listening, that I hear, I listen, and, but, and later I do, you know, whatever it is that she was talking about. But just in that moment, I don't. Yeah. And I think as believers, I, the difference is when... You know, I, I, I'll often say at the end of a service, what's the Spirit saying to me and what am I going to do about it? It's not mm -hmm. just enough to hear the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Like there should be some response. I believe the Word of God should always create some kind of response yeah. in us. Uh, it may not necessarily be something that we do, stop doing. It may be something that we start doing. And it may not even be an immediate thing. It may be we start in a direction, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, Yesterday you were talking about the call of God on your life. You didn't just get up from the altar and start in ministry the next day, right? Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't even that way for me, you know, um, and my path looked a little bit different than yours. I didn't get, I didn't myself go, go through a divorce until after I was in ministry. Mm -hmm. So my situation was a little bit different, but, and I, and, and I, how I was raised and where I was at, that pathway started. But I didn't, you know, there was a significant gap from the time I said I felt called to preach to the time I actually preached my first sermon to the time I took my first church to pastor, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes the action starts us on a journey. It's, it doesn't necessarily end that day, right? right? You know, right. and I'm still on that journey today, as a matter of fact. And so... Um, I think we have to understand that. Why do you think people ignore what Jesus has to say? Simply because it contradicts what they want to do. Um, like I said yesterday, we, we live in a world where, where people want to redefine everything. I mean, we see that literally going on in front of us like the last decade about things being redefined. And I, I think that they want to live their life the way that they want to. And a lot of people probably think that this concept of following Jesus is archaic. And some of it does boil down to representation. You know, 
What do you mean by that? That they, if if they see Christians living in a way that's contradictive to what most non-believers know about Jesus, um, or if they're just simply representing him wrong to them, you know, something that's a huge turnoff because Jesus isn't on a turnoff. Mm-hmm. You know, most of the time it's the way that he's represented. Right, presented. Uh, a few weeks back, we would have read First uh, Corinthians chapter eight, and Paul is telling them not to be a stumbling block. Mm-hmm. We, the question I grew up with was, is it right or is it wrong? And he addresses the, he says, just because it's right, don't mean you should do it. Like mm-hmm. freedom, responsibility is greater than whether you have the freedom to do it or not. Because if your freedom doing something causes someone else to stumble, you're going to be held accountable for it. Mm-hmm. And we have to realize that th- there may be some things we can get away with that is okay. It's, it's, it's not a heaven or hell issue. It's not even a sin issue, right? You know, mm. but it's it's an unwise thing that has an impact on other people, and we we need to be careful about it yeah. because it, it it how people receive the gospel ha- is is predicated a lot on how it's delivered and and the life of the person who has delivered it. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us tomorrow as we continue a conversation around the book of Mark.